Live 5 News starts now with breaking news. Within the last few hours, Governor Haley has announced a state of emergency and is planning coastal evacuation to begin tomorrow afternoon at 3 ahead of Hurricane Matthew. This category four storm moving over the Caribbean right now. Chief meteorologist Bill Walsh begins our team coverage. Bill, you've been tracking this storm all day. How soon could Hurricane Matthew impact us here in the low we country? We will definitely be looking at some impacts, certainly on the day on Thursday. We're going to start to see the storm approaching from the south. With the forecast, we're going to talk about rain on Thursday, breezy conditions because the pressure difference between the storm itself and, of course, what's going on with the uh, with the pressure difference with the ridge to the east. So bottom line, breezy, some rain showers Thursday throughout early Friday. Then it ramps up as Matthew works its way up from the south. This is the very latest storm uh, picture. This is, of course, what we call... Uh, an infrared picture, a visible picture. Uh, this one is visible. And again, you can see the storm now making landfall over eastern Cuba. We're continuing to watch that. Thoughts and prayers with the folks in Cuba and certainly throughout Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Here is that uh, infrared I was just talking about. This one's called an enhanced infrared. And the structure of the storm has been uh, still very, very structurally sound. It has been interrupted a little bit on the western semicircle with the mountains of Cuba and uh, some of the mountains of uh, the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Uh, but the bottom line, this is going to emerge into the Atlantic as a very healthy Category 4 hurricane over an area that is prone for or ready for uh, the storm to continue to maintain its strength uh, because it'll be over very warm water and it'll have very good outflow. Uh, so as we look at the track here in a moment, 140 mile an hour storm, 19.8 north, 74.3 west, 949 on the pressure moving north at 9. As we see it move across the Bahamas, stays a Category 4 until just off the coast of Jacksonville. And this is the uh, first alert that we gave you at five o'clock. The track has shifted a little further to the west because the Euro model has shifted a little further to the west, so a little bit closer to the Florida coast. Then it starts to make that turn, but don't focus on the line. Remember, this is a big storm. Hurricane force winds will probably be out around 50, 60 miles as it comes by. So it just has to come along the coast in order to feel hurricane force winds sustain, not just gust, but sustain winds for a period of maybe six, seven, maybe even 12 hours because this is 24 hours right here. And this is Saturday, still 100 miles mile an hour storm uh, right here just to the east of Little River Inlet. So again, we're going to continue to watch that. Let me give you another look at the GFS model. This is Friday night at 11 o'clock. We find the storm just to the uh, east of Savannah. Uh, and again, as we head for six o'clock Saturday morning, the storm is right along the coastal waters right here, very close to the coast. Again, probably going to be talking about some hurricane force winds along the coast right here. This is Saturday by 6 p.m. Starts to lift out. Most of the hurricane force winds will be gone by then, but still tropical storm force winds even through Saturday night because of the wind field, the tropical storm force winds extend out over 150 to 170 miles to the northwest and southwest of the system itself. Wind probabilities for hurricane force winds right on the borderline of about a 40% now, but I think that'll increase as the storm gets closer and as we fine tune that actual forecast. So talk about impacts, hurricane force winds certainly along the coast becoming more probable, looking at heavy surf, very heavy beach erosion and storm surge of three to five foot of water inundation because of the trajectory of the storm as it comes up from the south, it starts to move more northeast. We'll, we'll pretty much change that forecast, but it's the trajectory of the winds versus the coast because the coast goes from southwest to northeast. So we will certainly keep three to five feet as an average storm surge right now and about four to eight, possibly 10 inches of rainfall possible as it comes up from the south. So as far as the threat board goes, this is what we have right now. This is the wind threat board. Again, we're going to look at hurricane force winds, a five out of 10 chance for hurricane force winds that we might increase. Tropical storm force winds almost guaranteed. Storm Storm surge also on the high side probably going to be increased as well. Friday through Saturday time period on this. And again, we talked about that storm surge. Our one out of 10 threat con, 10 being the most impact of a tropical system here in the low country has been increased. We gave you the first alert to this at uh, three o'clock this afternoon. We increased that now to seven. More on this, we'll continue to track it right here and online. Certainly download our free mobile device. And at uh, 6.30, I'll be doing a live Facebook chat. So join us for that as well. But we'll take you step by step through the storm as we get the information together, we'll of course share it with you. When we know something, you'll know right away. And the time to talk about the storm is over. Now is the time to plan for the storm. Live in the Storm Center, back to you guys. All right, Bill, thank you. We continue our team coverage now on Edisto Beach, where a warning tonight for anyone who decides to stay on the beach during the hurricane. The police chief says no one will come to get you. 
everyone in town will have to leave by 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, according to the chief. Harv Jacobs live out on Edisto Beach right now. Harv, the town's mayor is taking this warning seriously. Yeah, Bill, we're even at her house right now. Take a look behind me. She has put up her hurricane shutters over there, over there, and over there behind me. She's not fooling around. She told me she and her husband will both leave along with everybody else. We went along with some firefighters this afternoon as they went door to door to let residents and visitors know about the mandatory evacuation. Many of them have never been through a hurricane like Matthew. Most were very understanding, and they said they will follow the evacuation order. At 3 p.m. tomorrow, Edisto Beach will, in essence, close up for business, and I'm told no one will be allowed back onto Edisto Beach until the all-clear is given. I'm told Edisto Beach State Park, also packed with visitors, many beachfront officials there told me in a public meeting this afternoon, those folks also have to be here, out of here, by 3 tomorrow. Officials are urging people to leave today, tonight, or tomorrow morning to avoid a possible traffic jam because there is only one way on, and one way off, Edisto Beach and Edisto Island. Live on Edisto Beach, Harv Jacobs, Live 5 News. Tri-County leaders urging people to get ready and even hit the road ahead of the potential threat brought by Hurricane Matthew. Our Liza Lucas is keeping an eye on conditions and has more details. Liza? Now, leaders Debbie are basically echoing Governor Haley this afternoon with that one message, and that is for people not to wait to leave this as the tri county and especially Charleston County leaders increase their emergency operation levels this afternoon, getting prepared for the storm and at the same time asking people that you don't have to wait to leave until you're ready. Here's Mayor Charleston Tecklenburg. When you have over a million people living near the coast that, you know, logistically it takes a little time to move folks out. If you got the means and a place to stay inland, I'd say go tonight if you can. Let's, let's go ahead and clear the way for folks that might have a little more trouble getting out of town. Now, at the same time, if you don't have a car or access with a friend, Charleston County will be having those bus pickup spots once that mandatory evacuation is issued. Those bus buses will start running. They've got more than 80 across the county, and you can find your nearest spot and how they'll take you to a local shelter. All that information on live5news.com. Live in North Charleston, Liza Lucas sending it back to you. All right, Liza, good job. Governor Haley held a news conference this afternoon. She has declared a state of emergency and urged all coastal communities to begin evacuating tomorrow afternoon at 3. She says highways will be crowded, but the goal is to keep everyone safe. That is the key is we want to be safe, but we also want to make sure it's not a frustrating situation for people. So that doesn't mean that you will get what you want quickly. It will take several hours. Um, but what we're asking is look at a mile from the coast and make sure you get out of harm's and in case you didn't hear that, we had some technical problems. The governor said try to get at least 100 miles away from the coast when you evacuate. The governor says there will be over 3,700 state law enforcement officials helping you get out of town. All schools across the low country will be closed tomorrow. All government offices will also be closed tomorrow. Download our Live 5 News app or you can visit us online at live5news.com to be notified of any other closures that may happen throughout the day. We've also started a list of the closings and the events that are being canceled this weekend. So head to live5news.com. And if you haven't already, folks, now's a good time to download our Live 5 weather app. You can track the latest developments on Hurricane Matthew as it pushes up the East Coast heading our way. We will also alert you to any potential watches or warnings as they come in. You can also find more information on where to pick up sandbags online at live5news.com. Coming up, now that we're under a state of emergency, how are the shelves at the grocery store looking? You may be surprised. Colby Satterfield is live, coming up next. And we're watching, of course, Matthew's Every Move. More on that. Also, for our forecast this evening tomorrow, for planning and whatnot, I'll have an update on that all coming up as well. What about that drive out there? It's been a little bit tough in a lot of places. Look at the red on the map. This is... 
Yeah, it's pretty pretty busy out there. So as you're looking at kind of stop and go at a lot of places, uh, the Merge Lane stop and go, uh, 526 is kind of slow, both west and eastbound, but especially westbound. And uh, Savannah Highway all the way over to Mount Pleasant, kind of slow going coming across the bridges and on into a Johnny Dodds and then back over to Johns Island. A couple of wrecks out there, one at the Savannah Highway and 526. And as we make our way down Dorchester Road, kind of slow. And uh, even back up towards Somerville, looking at some moderate to heavy traffic down, uh, say, 17A all the way through Main Street and then back on over toward Knightsville, a couple of wrecks over that way. Uh, and uh, coming down 176, uh, we are looking at a bit of a slowdown there after you get out of, uh, say, Goose Creek. So be on the lookout there. Uh, bottom line is uh, we'll continue to track that even up toward Monk's Corner. Look at that. It's a little bit busy up toward Monk's Corner as well. So we'll watch it. First alert traffic, of course, coming up more on that. And Matthew here in this half hour. With the governor's plan to evacuate beginning tomorrow afternoon and a state of emergency issued, now is the time for you to get gas and also stock up on the essentials you may need. Colby Satterfield has been talking to drivers and shoppers all afternoon. Colby, we're hearing that some stores are actually running out of water. So what's the situation there? Debbie, right now I'm at the Costco off Savannah Highway where they have been completely out of water for going on about four and a half hours now. You can see people are still coming and going, but it's really slowed down as people are coming home from work, going home. They say they're expected for it to get just as busy as it was earlier in the day within the next few hours. And shoppers are, are telling me this isn't the only place in town that's out of water. But they say they're here stocking up on the essentials anyway. I've been asking just about everyone if they're staying or evacuating. Right now I'm here hearing about half and half and I'm seeing a lot of people stocking up on dog food, granola bars, pre-packaged snacks, batteries and vehicle straps. So right now is the time to stock up if you are planning on staying and also if you're planning on evacuating. Live in West Ashley, Colby Satterfield by 5 News. All right, Colby, thank you. Now, folks, in just case you're just tuning in, let's bring you up to speed. Earlier this afternoon, Governor Haley declared a state of emergency. A coastal evacuation scheduled to begin at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. That's also when lane reversals on I-26 could begin, 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Also, all Tri-County schools, government offices, and businesses across the Lowcountry are closed right now. We'll continue following the latest developments. You can keep up with everything online and on air. Also, download our free weather app. There's no better time. It is free, and you can find it in your app store right now. I want to show you a live look out over the Ashley River bridges into downtown Charleston. Pretty picture right now. We don't show traffic here, but it is heavy already. If you're thinking about leaving town because of the hurricane, the sooner the better. We continue our team coverage as we alert you to Hurricane Matthew as that storm heads up the east coast apparently toward us. Our state reporter Ashley Holland live in Columbia where the governor held a news conference this afternoon on how the state is getting ready. Ashley. And that's right. And in that news conference here at the Emergency Operations Center earlier today, the governor said that South Carolina was declared in a state of emergency as early as 7:30 this morning. That's when the National Guard and troopers went out to start making preparations for evacuations. The governor calling for everyone along the South Carolina coast to evacuate. She says lane reversals at this point right now. We think at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. But Governor Haley urges people living along the coast to go ahead, get a head start, go ahead and start preparing to evacuate because she says it could take a while for people to get to get on the road and off the road. She says she's also urging people not to stay behind. She says it's better to get out and better be safe rather than sorry. So this is where I'm going to ask South Carolinians to really do what we've always done. It's neighbors taking care of neighbors. So what I'm going to ask you to do is go and look down your street, make sure that you've touched base with your neighbors, your church members, anyone that you know of. Um, that is um, has challenges, is elderly, with small children, any sort of thing like that. And let's take time to not just focus on our families, but focus on everybody else's to get the word out. I think if we do that, it's been amazing how through two winter storms and a thousand year flood and all of that, that we've managed to really take care of each other. 
We do know troopers are already out prepping for those lane reversals along those routes tomorrow. Uh, the governor has already called another news conference tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock right here at the Emergency Operations Center. We will be there to update everyone with the latest. Bill. The Low Country's news leader. Your first alert forecast from the most trusted weather team. Live 5 News. All right, Ashley, thank you so much. First alert uh, weather, of course, we're continuing to track Matthew, the most powerful live radar in the low country. We gave you the first alert at 3 o'clock that we upped our own threat con to 7. Plus, we gave you the first alert at 5 o'clock with the track that's a little further to the west. Bottom line, we're going to feel the impacts from the storm, in particular on into Friday and Saturday. I'll more on that here in just a moment. So, But now is the time to certainly prepare for that and think about what you're going to do, especially if you'll be evacuating. All right, we are talking about uh, still most of the rain showers are offshore, not so much related to that as we uh, zoom on in here just a little bit. If you're going out this evening, just uh, mostly cloudy. We're not seeing any shower activity. I don't expect too much shower activity. Put a slight chance in there at about 20%. Here's a live picture from our Holiday and Riverview Sky Cam as you take a look right there into downtown at 76 degrees is where we are right now. 82 was the high, which by the way, is the actual normal high temperature. 58% humidity, wind out of the northeast now at about 9 miles per hour. Some of the other temperatures from Georgetown, we're watching the storm. Few folks as well, 74 degrees. Sullivan's Island, obviously we're watching 76. Down to Folly, Buford, Hilton Head, Ladies Island, Fripp Island, Data, Data Island, all the islands we're pretty much watching very, very carefully, as well as the inland areas, Monk's Corner and back over to Walterboro. Walterboro now 79 hour by hour. If you are stepping out by 8 o'clock this evening, if you're going to be out doing some shopping or running around 73 degrees, you put a slight chance in there 20%. By 10 o'clock, around 71. By news time later on, back to about 70. And again, mostly cloudy skies is what we've got on the way for this evening and through tomorrow as well. Let me give you the first alert as to what to expect tomorrow morning. I don't expect any heavy weather tomorrow. Tomorrow, just some clouds, maybe a couple of stray showers. And here it is with our future track, our 6 a.m. Some clouds. I'll put this into motion, take you hour by hour. By, say, lunchtime, mostly cloudy. Can't rule out a stray shower tomorrow, but we'll still see some clouds, some peaks of sunshine. Even through the after work hours tomorrow, we're going to go with mostly cloudy skies. So bottom line is we'll watch this hurricane. And as we head toward Friday, Saturday, we're going to be fine-tuning that forecast. But for the next two days, I don't expect too much weather, maybe a little more on Thursday. Thursday, the wind will start to increase at breezy conditions, but even tomorrow and into Thursday as the uh, pressure difference between the, the big hurricane here and, of course, the high off the East Coast. Here is the uh, tropical satellite, and again, these are the very latest numbers that we talked about off the top of the show. It does move across the Bahamas as a Cat 4. There's not a lot to inhibit this thing from holding its own as a Cat 4. Once it gets further to the northern latitudes, it starts to pick up a little bit of wind shear after we get by, say, Friday and into Saturday, so the, uh, the forecast has decreased to a category two status, a hundred mile an hour storm, but that's northeast of Little River. We could still have the potential of even seeing borderline category three winds right here along the coast if this gets any closer to us. So that's what we're watching very carefully. These players, the East Coast trough is what we're watching, creating a bit of a window. The only problem is this ridge is forecast to increase this way, which forces the storm further west or closer to the coast. That's why these impacts are going to be something we're going to be fine tuning. So we will be expecting hurricane force winds along the coast, uh, tropical storm force winds up to up to 60, 70, even 100 miles inland. So we'll be fine tuning that as well. Heavy surf, storm surge, three to five feet north and east of the center. That's why we're talking about evacuating uh, some of the islands, certainly in along the coastal counties, four to eight inches of rain, maybe up to 10 inches of rain possible with this system. So there it is, Friday and Saturday. We're gonna be tracking Matthew, watching very, very carefully. As we get closer, we'll be fine tuning that forecast. Remember, now's the time not to talk about the storm, but to plan for the storm. And as we head into the next two days, a couple of stray showers, then a little bit better into next week. Back with more of Live 5 News here at 6 next.